Hello and welcome back to Professional Tutors. So in today's lesson, we're going to talk about magnets. It's the key stage three lesson for year sevens and year eights, but can also be used by GCSE students who are doing foundation paper. So here's a quick starter for us. What happens when light poles are placed near each other and unlike poles are placed near each other? Pause the video, give it a go. Three, two, one. Let's have a look at the answers. So like poles, they repel each other. And unlike poles, they always attract each other. This is a really important exam question. The magnets, they exert a non-contact force of attraction to magnetic metals. So in exam, they always ask you to give three examples of a non-contact force. One of them is magnetic force. Second one is gravitational force or gravitational field or gravity. And the third one is electrostatic force, which acts between the charges. This is a really important exam question. They will ask you in the exam, name three metals or name three magnetic metals. So it's really important to remember or memorize this. This is only iron, cobalt, and nickel are magnetic material or magnetic metals. Quick two questions for us to answer. What is a compass used for? And how does a compass work? Pause the video, give it a go. Three, two, one. Just have a look at the answers. We all know we used compass for navigation. And how does the compass work? The earth behave, behaves like a giant magnet and the small magnetic metal needle in the compass always point towards north. Quick quiz for us. Choose the correct answer. Question number one. When light poles are placed near each other, the options are they attract, they repel, there's no change. Three, two, one. The answer is they repel. Next question. Magnets exert a non-contact force on. The options are all metals, iron, cobalt, and nickel, other magnets only. Three, two, one. The answer is iron, cobalt, and nickel. Next question. The earth has, the options are a giant magnet in the middle of it, a magnetic core, a magnetic field. Three, two, one. The answer is a magnetic field. Next question. A compass works by option one, having a tiny magnetic metal strip that lines up with the Earth's magnetic field, so it points to the north. Option two, pointing where you need to go. And option three, being attracted to magnets on the Earth. Three, two, one. The answer is having a tiny magnetic metal strip that lines up with the Earth's magnetic field, so it points to the north. There will be an important exam question where they will ask you to draw magnetic field lines around a bar magnet. Two rules, two important rules you need to follow. 
the arrows, they always go from north and they end up in south. And the magnetic lines, they're closer together around the poles and they're further away from each other anywhere else around the magnet. And the poles are defined by where the magnetic field is the strongest. So it's important to remember this, magnetic field lines, they always originate from the north and they always end up in south. Now here are some summary questions for you to answer. Pause the video, take your time, give it a go. Three, two, one. Let's mark the answers. The first, one, first question was name the two poles of a magnet. Draw diagrams for what happens when like and unlike poles are placed near each other. Explain how you could test whether a material is magnetic or not. Explain how a compass works. Just have a look at the answers. Name two poles, that's north and south. And the second question was draw diagrams. So let's see. So unlike poles, they attract each other and the like poles, they repel each other. If you want to find out whether a metal or material is magnetic or not, place a magnet near the material. If the magnet attracts or repels, then the material is magnetic, otherwise it's not. And we already discussed this, how a magnetic compass works. That has a magnetic metal strip inside and it always points towards the north. That's all for today. Have a lovely day.